Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I'm your host, the Bear. Chris Felica, Jeff Schwartz is with me. My co-host, as usual, Sammy P. Will Hill, will join us for the gambling group chat. Uh, Thanksgiving week is here, which means the regular season is approaching its end in college football. It's pretty amazing. Uh, we are doing today, uh, taping on Tuesday, we're doing what everybody loves to do. Bet into numbers on a Tuesday afternoon <laughs> during uh, during the, the, the worst possible yes. days of the week after you miss the close and and, and you and you miss any any injury news. Yeah, exactly. So we got rivalry games and we got we got a lot of stake this weekend. Still. But we're here and we're going to do our best, like, yes. like like we always have. Um, so let's get at it. Let's not no no happy talk. No happy talk because you know our, our gambling group chat, which we love to do. Uh, we got lengthy today, and it's a lot a lot of preparation for this. So we'll get right to Bear's picks again, guys. These are wagers that that Bear makes each and every week because you know who would bet on UTSA Tulane anyway, right? So the first one, UTSA Good Tulane. Game. Tulane is favored by four points here. The total is fifty two. UTSA is eight and three overall, but the perfect seven zero conference play. They're five and six against the spread. Tulane ten and one with a perfect conference record as well. They've only covered four of their 11 games. Bear, what do we got here? I took the Roadrunners plus the four here. I mean, since Frank Harry, I had them a couple of weeks ago. I think it was against Rice uh, laying a big number and they got there. Seven straight wins, uh, six by at least 14 points. Um, if you do a little, again, comparing scores is always a little dangerous. But if you look at some of the common opponents yes. that they have with Tulane, UTSA has been more impressive uh, in a lot of those games. Yeah. So I know Tulane has won nine straight, and they finally had that non-close game last week. They got it to a good start yeah. uh, when I had FAU plus the uh, plus the points against them. Again, closing line value, throw it away. Um, <laughs> but uh, I this number, I saw yeah. three, then I saw three and a half, and I saw a four out there earlier today. So I'm going to take the Roadrunners plus the four. It's worth noting that the AAC schedule for both these teams means they haven't played anyone very good until they play each other this mm -hmm. weekend. And you have, you know, two teams that are well, fairly Tulane, similar. Tulane did beat Memphis. I they know did that. beat Memphis, yes. Um, but they're fairly similar in, in points per drive and offensive defense. I mean, you just take the, the points here. Like that feels like the spot to take the points with two teams that feel Great. close enough to each other. And they've had a schedule where they, this is the best team they played. Like there's not a lot of like, oh, well, they beat this team and that team. So, uh, I'm with you here, uh, with the points and the road runners. Let's get to the state of North Carolina here, an ACC matchup, a rivalry game, <laughs> NC State <laughs> at North Carolina. North Carolina has a two and a half point favorite right now. Total is 55, as I think Bears sing some fight song. The might be related to this game. You at North Carolina. Uh, okay, there, I didn't know, I know that. Eight, really? uh, NC Couldn't State, 8-3. and three. Five and two conference record. The Wolfpack are six and five against the spread. And they have won four straight games, including a 2017, excuse me, 24 17 win against Clemson recently, about a month ago. North Carolina, eight and three, four and three in, in conference play. They're six and five against the spread. They have cooled off lately. Fast start, cooling off. Where are you going here? This, I think, could be Dave Duran's best job that he's done. Fantastic. Uh, in, in, in Raleigh. Like the quarterback play has not been good for much of the year, made multiple changes. I think the wrong team might be favored here. It's probably the final time we see Drake May uh, in a North Carolina uniform. I, I can't see him playing a, a bowl game that's not going to be one of the elite type New Year's Six bowls yeah, no, no, uh, like we thought maybe UNC was headed for earlier in the year. Like, they're staggered home, lost three of its four against yeah. FBS teams, and they very easily could have lost uh, to Duke, fortunate to win. They've given up 31, 46, 45, 31 in those games. They've kind of followed the pattern of previous years where everybody excited early yes. on, and then they just absolutely, you know what, down, down, the, down the stretch. So uh, I think NC State at home should probably, I mean, this game should at least yes. be a pick -em at uh, in, uh, in, in Raleigh. So uh, I took NC State plus the points here. I think they got the better defense, and I know they may have been a little fortunate with some turnover luck, but uh, I like NC State, and I think they can – they win this game, have a great chance again to get that 10th win. I had this backward. NC State's at home, which is important here. They're getting yes. the points at a rivalry game. Look, I, it's hard to they take— They won in Chapel Hill last year. Yes, it's hard to take a favorite sometimes when they play no defense. Like, North Carolina doesn't play any defense. And I know that there's been quarterback changes, Morris redshirting, Armstrong's back, but the offense looked pretty good last weekend mm -hmm. for NC State. So um, I, I like this pick here. All right, let's get to uh, another game here, your third game that you're wagering on. This week, just only three so far. Memphis at Temple, Temple at home, plus 11 and a half. Total of 65. Memphis eight and three overall. They're five and two conference play. They lost a tight game last weekend to SMU. The Tigers have only covered three of 11 games. Temple three and eight, 
one and six in the AAC. They have covered three of 11 games as well. Where are you going here? I had the Owls last week, and they were the right side until they weren't, which was about after 58 minutes of play. So uh, I'm going to back them against here. Uh, back them again here. It's going to be a sleepy, miserable type atmosphere uh, in Philly for for Temple getting 11 half. I don't know what we're going to get from Memphis. They they have no chance of getting to the AAC title game. Defensively, they've been awful. Uh, last road game against Charlotte, I had Charlotte as a big double digit dog. Very easily could have won that game. You almost got me the money line win there, Jeff, yeah. but you did get me the cover. So it's a pretty good Temple passing attack. So I think they can score enough points to hang around here. This is a classic emotional letdown spot for Memphis. You know, SMU, the game they had to win to stay alive in the conference race. They lost that game. They're going to Philly this weekend. It's going to be cold. It's going to be a little miserable. Um, it just, how many fans are going to be there? It's just going to be a, a dead spot for Memphis. I'm with you. It's a lot of points uh, with Temple here. I think that's the right side. Let's get to the Big 12 here. TCU is at Oklahoma. Oklahoma's favored by 10, total of 63 and a half. TCU 5 and 6, 3 and 5 in conference play. They've covered 5 of their 11 games. Oklahoma 9 and 2 overall, 6 and 2 in conference play. Sooners are 7 and 4 against the spread. We talked a little bit about it in the group chat, which we taped just before we uh, hopped on you and I here. Like, a short week, I think, works against Oklahoma here. Like Gabriel and Farouk, the assumption is they're going to be okay to play, but like, with a concussion, I who knows so. if Gabriel is going to be able to play, if he's going to get cleared yeah. by then. So like, I think getting 10, this number's actually come down a little bit. Yeah. So maybe that's an indication that one or neither will play. I mean, Jackson Arnold certainly you think would be capable, but TCU, like they played a bunch of one score games. Unlike last year where they were on the right side of them, they've been on the wrong side of them this year. They need a win to get to a bowl. And I, and I think ever since putting in Josh Hoover, the freshman quarterback, they, they've been pretty good on offense replacing yeah. Morris. So I, I think TCU is, I mean, they played Texas well uh, a couple of weeks ago, getting the cover. So would not surprise me if they went to Norman here, kept this game close. Uh, it would not surprise me either. I, I think they, they, we'll talk about this in the gambling group chat to, to preview that as well. But like the coming back in five, no, six days from a concussion, this game is on Friday is fairly unlikely for, for Gabriel. And, and you want to air on Noon the side Friday of caution. Noon Friday to early Friday. You want to, you want to, you want to side on the air on the side of caution. There is a, you know, postseason, you know, for, for Oklahoma and you worry about the kid's future. I, I just don't think they're going to rush him back to play. Let Jackson Arnold play, which favors TCU in this game, right? A young player, um, you know, being able to, to start in this game on a shorter week. Uh, TCU is also fighting for a bowl game in this game as well. So um, you have uh, you have TCU plus 10 here. The last game for now, before we get to Gamma Group Chat and Best Bets, uh, Colorado at Utah. Utah favored by 21 and a half, total 52 and a half. Colorado four and seven. Right now, a single conference win. The Buffs are six, four, and one against the spread. Utah seven and four with a four and four conference record. They're also six, four, and one against the spread. Bear, what do you got here? Colorado is an absolute mess right now. Uh, making that change off at the offensive coordinator was a terrible decision. I can't imagine Shadur Sanders is going to play. We saw Utah get blown out by Arizona last week. All the injuries, the people sitting out that Utah had. This is still a, a team. We saw Utah get annihilated by Oregon. They bounce back with a 55-3 win uh, the following week against a, a bad overmatched team. We don't see Utah put together consecutive miserable efforts, and I would expect the Utah backups and whoever plays in Salt Lake and that stadium to just end Colorado's season quickly here in a very ugly manner. I lay the 21 and a half. I will also lay the 21 and a half, personally. Um, Colorado looks... Like they just look dead. Like if you look them after the, the loss of Washington State, like Dion looked drained. He looked like he's emotionally yeah. exhausted. Sanders might not play in this game. And Utah, despite the injuries, they still play hard each and every week. Right. Cam Rising's coming back for next DNA season. That, program. That, that announcement well, I think will fire them up. It's senior day. Um, this is this has like 40 to 10, right? Like it just it, yeah. it's 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 going to be chilly in Salt Lake City. Um, so I'm, I'm with you on this one. I will, I'm wagering this myself, by the way. So let's recap Bears' five wagers so far. You have a UTSA plus four. NC State hosting North Carolina plus the two and a half. Temple here plus 11 and a half hosting Memphis. You have TCU on the road plus 10. And Utah 
hosting Colorado on senior night, senior day. It's a day game, favored by 21 and a half. Let's hit the gambling group chat. We hit all the games, the Heisman odds. It is a long, girthy gambling group chat. Here it is now. Time for the gambling group chat. Myself, Jeff, Will, and Sammy back. Again, we're uh, recording this Tuesday afternoon, so the college football playoff rankings are not updated yet. But obviously, uh, big news in, in the college football world with the injury to Jordan Travis, the unfortunate injury uh, to Jordan Travis. So it's, I, I guess it's not really a, an actionable betting type of question because uh, I really don't know how you handle this. I mean, may, maybe Sammy or Will or Jeff, someone smarter than I am, is figured out a way to maybe figure, figure out a way to play in or out of this. But if you were the playoff committee, uh, Will, how would you ha- how would you handle this Jordan Travis injury for Florida State in terms of like where would you have the the, the Seminoles ranked and and and, and do you think the the committee potentially uh, could leave an ACC champion Florida State out if they do run the table here? Yeah, you asked how I would handle it. I would maybe say a prayer, light a candle, hope like hell they lose so I don't have to deal with it because let's face it, if they get in, it, it, it might be harsh to say it's a buy, but like, look, it's a TV show. At, at the end of the day, I know it's a playoff game. It's football, it's sports, but this is a TV show. And if you put them in, it's kind of, it's bad TV where, all right, Georgia's is going to beat up on Florida state and it's going to be a non-competitive game. I'm sure the committee is just hoping, praying, wishing they lose enough to deal with it. I have a hard time seeing them get left out. The only thing I can really think of is a comparison because we don't really have a precedent. Um, it, college basketball a long time ago, I think it was 2001 or, or so. Kenyon Martin got hurt for Cincinnati and they were clearly a one seed in the and the committee bumped him down to a two seed. This is obviously different where yep. you're just leaving them out of the tournament altogether. I don't know. I, I don't know that they would have the guts to do it. They'd obviously blow back there in a very tough spot. Let's face it. No matter what, if they go undefeated, this is a very tough spot here for the committee. It, it's interesting too, because there is a little bit of a parallel with Florida state. Remember the first year of the BCS uh, in 1998, Chris Wenke got hurt in the final regular season. game against Fl- uh, I believe you know, next. I think it might have been the next to last regular season game or the last regular season game. He w- was out, and they had to bring in Marcus Outson, who uh, at the time wasn't very uh, highly thought of. Hadn't played a ton. He had the Heisman Trophy winner the following year uh, on the on the roster in Wanky. But in '98, uh, you knew Marcus Outson was going to have to play if they were to go to the national title game and play Tennessee. He, it was going to have to be Outson. Uh, the, the BCS ranking spat out Florida State. Uh, to play Tennessee in the title game. That Seminole's offense uh, was terrible that night. So uh, it could potentially be the second time that Florida State would be playing uh, in a national championship type situation uh, with a backup quarterback. Sam, do you have any thoughts on that? Like, is, would, would Louisville to, to win the ACC t- title now be, be worth a play? Sight unseen on the, uh, the Florida State co- uh, backup quarterback against a, a real team this week? You could do that. I mean, you look at the number this week, Florida's a six point dog against Florida state. And if you go to the ACC championship, you're going to say like three, three and a half. I mean, without Travis, that's the real elephant in the room. Like how much is he worth um, with Travis bear? I had him as the number 10 team in the country in power ratings with mm-hmm. Travis. He's got to drop or they've got to drop at least seven spots. Cause he's worth at least four or five points. So you're talking about without Travis, I got like Florida State and Clemson equal on a neutral. So that tells me, all of us, that we're talking about Louisville only being a three-point dog in the ACC championship. That's very, very possible. Look, guys, if they go 13-0, they're making the playoff. I mean, to Will's point, should they? Point, like, should they? Yes, yes. If they go undefeated, they should make the playoff. They're it's, better. They would be better than Texas, look, I, Alabama. It's not. Whoever. It's not a system that is fair. But this is a system we have right now. We have a four-team playoff. If you win all your football games in a Power 5 conference, you should be a playoff team. It doesn't mean it's fair. It doesn't mean they're the four best teams. If we go four best teams every year, just put in Alabama and Georgia, at least two, and put Ohio State and Michigan, right? You have your four best teams right there, right? Like, it's that's not the way the system is set up. The system is set up to where they reward conference champions. If you're a 13-0 conference champion, you're into the playoff. And you're Will's right. That Georgia-Florida State game is going to be awful. Georgia's going to win that game by three or four scores. But 
you have to reward a 13-0 season in a Power 5 conference with a playoff berth. Now, look, the committee's probably rooting against Florida State. The committee's rooting against a lot of these teams because they're going to have a log jam here if, if a lot of teams went out. I mean, they're rooting for Texas to lose. I'm sure they're rooting for Alabama to, to lose or not even Alabama to lose, but like Oregon and Washington to lose. So they can put Alabama and Georgia both in. Like there, there's, they're rooting for a lot of things to happen. And one of them is Florida State. But again, 13-0, guys, I, they're in. Like it's, it stinks sort of to watch a game like that, but they, they will deserve that playoff. Break. See, I, I think what you're I saying, agree they though, should be in. If, I never said they shouldn't be in. I'm just saying, like, that's the reality. It's going to be a hard test for them to get in because these next two games are not layups. That's all I'm trying to say. Like, let's not even have this conversation because it doesn't matter until they get through the next two games. If they get through the next two, we can have the conversation. Yeah, I, I think what's interesting in what Will and Jeff were just saying about Florida State versus Georgia, that's assuming that the committee – would put Florida State in and have the Seminoles fourth. Because I, I think we all think Georgia will be number one if they win the SEC championship game against Alabama. They'll have the Michigan-Ohio State winner second. And then that's saying you wouldn't have a 13-0. and Either you'd have a 13-0 and Washington ahead of a Florida State or a 12-1 and Oregon ahead of Florida State, which I would do. But would the committee do that and have a 12-1 and Oregon with, with the loss ahead of the undefeated team? So... If it were me, yes, that that that's what I would do. But it it does remain because by by then you're saying, okay, look, you're in. You were thirteen and zero. We yeah. get it. You should be in, but you're really not as good as this team that has one loss. And I think our numbers last week we, we talked about Oregon being a, a on the look ahead like would be but from Chris Andrews an Oregon a four point yeah. favorite over the Knolls, and you would think that Oregon would have to be at least a touchdown favorite uh, if if they if the, if you're looking at power rankings and how those teams w- would be. Uh, will be matched up. So yeah, it is going to be interesting to see how the committee handles that. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, getting back tonight and, and watching and seeing what everybody has to say about it. Obviously, uh, biggest game of the weekend will be in Ann Arbor where big new kickoff will be. And Gus and Joel and, and Jenny and Tom and everyone else will be on, on, on hand. Uh, Ohio State and Michigan, uh, I, for the last month or so, for the last six weeks, I, I couldn't envision a scenario where I would play Ohio State in this game. I just didn't see it. However, it looks like Michigan, we may have overrated them, maybe a little bit uh, based on what we've seen the last couple of weeks. I kind of not throwing the pass in the second half against Penn State, uh, letting Maryland back in the game. And that game, look, that, that game, I had Maryland on the uh, the first half line plus 10 and a half. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sorry for the, the four yard scoop and score fumble and, and the safety in that game that didn't allow me to get there. But I know, Sammy, you've had Michigan uh, power ranked number one for a good part of the season. Do you still see it that way? Uh, we got what, Michigan three and a half in most spots now, 46. Uh, do you think Michigan should be a bigger favor than that? Well, the numbers say they should. So the realization to look at the board and only see Michigan three, three and a half is telling me that, look, I think the power ratings were just a little bit in need of a calibration. Um, I got Kenny's numbers right here. Kenny White's number. He's got Michigan 128 and a half and Ohio State 125 and a half. This is a guy who's made lines for four decades in Vegas. He's got it three. That's on a neutral though, guys. This game is in Ann Arbor. Right. So you add at least four or five for home field, you would think. And we're at, you know, a true number of maybe closer to a touchdown. But I look at this total, guys, at 46. I know it's going to be very, very popular to go under. Have you guys looked at the last, like, five meetings? 45-23, 42-27, 56-24, 48-28, 48 Michigan, 30-27. Granted, what happened five years ago that has nothing to do with what happens this weekend, but Maybe this is the Marvin Harrison Jr. explosion game. Maybe Michigan still can run the ball at will against a sort of weak Ohio State front seven. I I think that this number at 46 is, it speaks to me and I want to go over and I think it's going to go a little bit higher. I think we're going to see 47. Yeah, I I know, Bear, we were texting in our our text thread that, hey, this is going to go under. I think it'll close maybe 44, 44 and a half. So I do like the under. Granted, what you said, Sammy, I was going to bring it up too. The last four meetings, of course, there wasn't a meeting in 2020, but uh, 101 points, 83 points, 69 and 68. So maybe we're crazy for going under. But like you said, these are different teams. Um, Yeah, I just, man, that Michigan pass protection, the tackles, that that is such a red flag for me. Uh, There's whispers McCarthy's not 100%. By the same token, do you really want to trust McCord on the road in Michigan? 
I don't know that I do. I, to me, it's a 23-20 type of game. Uh, I think it's a conservative game plan at first. Both teams think, hey, we can win it with our defense. Ohio State says, hey, we can win it with our front and create some pressure. To me, this is a lower scoring game. I just I take the four the last four years, and I know it's it's eye popping the, the numbers and the points scored. I think you got to throw them out the window. I think this is more of an under game field goal game too. So I lean towards the dog. I feel like both these teams are, are pretty even on neutral field. I, I know the power ratings suggest otherwise, but if you look at the way they play, you know, stylistically, right? Again, they want to protect the quarterbacks. We know that. They want to be able to to run the football. We know that. They want to play strong, stout defense and rush the passer. Like they're they're identical. They're they're basically the same team. Now, of course, there's some advantages on certain positions and whatnot, but you know, in the end, I think the points and the under is is the way to go here. For that reason, if you have two teams that are they're similar, then take the for me, you you take the points here in a game where against quarterbacks, they want to avoid them making mistakes. But the best player in the field is Marvin Harrison Jr., right? And if there's a, an ability for him to get loose at some point in this game, and Michigan's gonna double him, I and mean, they'll find ways to, to not have him be the guy, but he's the difference maker, in my opinion. If you can get him the ball in space and find ways for him to be the most dynamic player in the field, then Ohio State has a great chance to, to outright win this game. The question is, obviously, can McCord get him the ball, and how will they get him the ball if Michigan decides to try to take him away? So I think these teams are pretty even, and, and, and that's the reason I, I would take the points here. It, it seems like that's been the school of thought from a lot of people this week is that Ohio State kind of is a live dog. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but Will alluded to it. I I grabbed under 47 and a half on, on Saturday night when I first got uh, access to look ahead line, assuming that this thing was going to close uh, around 44, 44 and a half. I'd like for it to come down a little bit more. Uh, that way I could buy a little bit back. Weather looks okay right now. doesn't look like uh, it's going to be super windy. Um, temperatures low 30. So uh, it does look like potentially we could be a, a good weather and, um, if that Ohio State offensive line can pass protect, maybe uh, Harrison could have a game. But yeah, but uh, what I think what Will said is kind of where I am in this game. Do I trust McCord and the Ohio State offensive line in this game? Henderson's been great the last few weeks. Uh, will, can he have success uh, running the ball against that Michigan defense? So uh, may, 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 make me make a wager right now. I'm laying the three, the three and a half with Michigan just because uh, I think the numbers come down a little bit too much. Sammy, you alluded to. Uh, to Marvin Harrison, uh, we, we know you uh, a couple weeks ago you found a uh, uh, twenty I think twenty five to one Heisman ticket that you may have bet a while back on Harrison. I know you've got the Penix tickets right now. Seems to be the the, the talk right now that maybe potentially this is down to a two man race. Uh, Bo Nix, if Oregon wins, it wins the Pac twelve. Uh, a lot of people think he could win. Uh, I think the school of thought right now and the sentiment is if Oregon doesn't win the big the, the Pac-12 that Jaden Daniels because of his historic type season will be the winner uh, are you still seeing a path for Marvin Harrison or is that more of like a, a hopeful type situation probably not he needed to have a bigger game last week and the week the week before that probably I uh, I feel like I'm going to just frame those two tickets and put them up in the office I mean they were nice relics for <laughs> Eight, 10 weeks, but it's pretty much over at this point. It is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to jump back into the pool and go fishing for Daniels or Knicks around, you know, even money or whatever. That's not going to happen. I mean, Jaden Daniels is going to have 50 touchdowns this year, guys. That's, that's absurd. And I think it's clear that LSU is putting him in full position to get there. I mean, they could have mm -hmm. taken him out at halftime against the last opponent at Georgia State, but they kept him in there and they're going to try and run it up. This is literally LSU's. Most important part of their season now. They thought they were college football playoff good. They thought they were SEC good. That stuff is all over. So basically, the boosters and the fan base are putting everything into this Daniels for Heisman basket. And he's going to play four, quarter, four quarters, even if they're up 30 points. He's going to play the whole game. Yep. Talked about that last week. Is the betting angle here, uh, aside from the Heisman for a second, LSU team total over because they made a point to get over that number and get 56 points last week against Georgia Southern. Uh, A&M sort of a dead team playing, what, a third third string quarterback, fired their coach. Yep. Do we play LSU team total over here? Um, I don't know that there's a bet on Heisman, but maybe that's a way to play it. Uh, and, and if you want to get crazy with the Heisman, just this, this is just for the sake of conversation. Can you paint a scenario where Beck has a case? for Georgia where these guys sort of knock each other off. Nobody's that impressive. And then he lights up Alabama and that's sort of the last thing we saw, or is that just completely out of touch? I, I sort of tend towards to, to defer towards the latter, but just throwing it out there is Beck completely dead. 
I think Beck's completely dead. I mean, I, I think that it's Jaden Daniels or, right. or, or Knicks and, and maybe the, you know, maybe Penix if he plays very well this weekend in the pack of target. Look, Jaden Daniels is playing the best quarterback in the country. Like he, he, he completely is. He doesn't have the benefit though of playing, uh, you know, the, a, a top 15 team and then a top five team. And Bonix has the, has that benefit of playing those games on Friday night and then potentially again on Friday night against two teams in national television and games that people are going to watch intently. And so he has that advantage over Jane Daniels. If, if it were to end today, I think mean, Jane Daniels wins, but Bo Nix still has those two games, those, those opportunities to show people what he can do. And if he beats those, those teams and Oregon scored 30 points now in every game this season, I would imagine that he continues to score 30 points in their final two games. Bo Nix will be close to winning this, this war. Even though I think, again, LSU fans are so angry. I keep defending Bo Nix. I mean, I'm an Oregon guy. I just want to be clear about how he's playing, but Daniels is fantastic this season. He's, he's doing a fantastic job. And look, I, I get it. you're throwing bombs uh, up uh, 49, 14 with five minutes left to, to neighbors. I get what you're doing LSU, but, that's part of the gig, right? Is you're, you're trying to get your guy, the Heisman. Look, Oregon did the same thing. They they try to get Bonick to seventh touchdown uh, against Arizona State. The difference is that was in the third quarter with 11 minutes left to, you know, in the third quarter. But look, everyone's doing this now. They're, they're stat pan their guys. Uh, but Bonick has the opportunity in those final two games to win the Heisman. We'll see if he does. I don't know. Yeah, I, I, what, what I hate about, by the way, uh, Jaden Daniels, Leads the nation in total offense by 81 yards a game over Drake May. It's a, it's a, it's an it's insane fantastic. margin. But what I hate about this is how, if you're back, if you back Daniels, it's interpreted as, oh, you think Bo Nix sucks. If you back Bo Nix, <laughs> you think oh, Jaden Daniels sucks. It, it's not like a all because you're backing one guy, you are you're hating the other. Like they are, if Bo Nix wins the Heisman, he deserves it. He's had a great year and potentially leading Oregon to the college football playoff. If Jaden Daniels wins it, he's had a historic year and in the three losses, his defense allowed 40 points a game or whatever it was. So uh, there, it's one of those situations where I don't think there is a wrong choice. Whoever wins it will deserve it. Um, I have a better number on Jaden Daniels than I do Bo Nix. So obviously my wallet <laughs> would like to see Jaden Daniels win, but, but if Bo Nix wins, I'm, I'm going to be okay as well. And, and I think, Will, wasn't it, wasn't it Femi on uh, the GM Shuffle podcast, I think, earlier in the year that, that uh, put out Bo Nix there like 35 to 1 or so? He was one of first the first guys on that at a really good number. I want to make sure we clip this for social media. Chris Felica, the Bears, says Bo Nix sucks. So just make sure we get that out there. That's what he said. <laughs> um, yeah, give credit to Femi. That was back before I think they played Colorado. He's like, hey, I think they're going to have a, a big game against Colorado. Just get ahead of the number. Take them 30 to 1. So, yeah, we, we talk about this all the time. Put these good numbers in your pocket, and you know, hopefully it pays off. And, and, and looking at some of these good numbers, there really I don't think are any good numbers in terms of conference champions or odds to win the win the playoff right now or win the national championship. Uh, so I, I guess it's a little look at some of the uh, some of the games this week that might be uh, attractive, other than the Ohio State Michigan game. Uh, go go to Friday. I, I mean, Iowa did it again last week, tw twenty eight points or whatever it was in the game. Another under. Now you've got whatever they're ranked, the seventeenth, eighteenth team that's beaten nobody all year. Uh, two point underdog against Nebraska, who's fighting for for bowl eligibility. So that goes to show you what the the, the disconnect between the rankings uh, and, and the power ratings. Will I think you like Nebraska in this game, don't you? I do like Nebraska. If you watch the end of that Iowa Illinois game, and I think all of us watched that more than we wanted to admit last week, they were very happy on the sidelines. And good so. for them. They, they're, they're the butt of a lot of jokes. You know, everyone makes fun of them. Hey, you get to a Big Ten title game. That's an accomplishment. We can all poke holes in it, and, and rightfully so. But hey, give them credit. But now you have a Nebraska team where this game means something to them. They're fighting for a bowl rule. I think in its first year, in, in a you know get the direction going in the right program kind of thing, it would mean something to get to a bowl. Doesn't mean as much for Iowa. Nebraska's home. I think it's a good spot for. Nebraska. So I like him on a money line here in what is uh in what should be a low scoring game. 25 and a half now, the number Oof. at uh off offshore and the super book. Sam, you want you want to don't you, you want to go under 25 and a half over? here? Can, can you can't you just no, throw that in a can't. 10 point teaser to the over 10 point? You can't get to 15 and a half points. So just throw it in there. 10, yeah. 10, 10 points. 10 teaser. I could throw something else. Yeah. Yeah. 10, 10, 10 I could, yeah. Yes, yeah, 10 7. I, I I could see that, but I was going to say, not a six points either. How many points? 25 and a half? 25 and a half. You have to take the over at some point. No, you game, don't. don't you? To 25 no, you points? Don't. I mean, what, This game could what, end 10-7. One defensive score and you're over, basically. But I don't... <laughs> I, I couldn't go over. So, Sammy, anything on uh, on Friday that you want to strike in your fancy? 
I have under 27 for the record. So if it gets to 24, I can <laughs> I can do some stuff there. You know what I mean? I could I could get creative. I was nine and two to the under this year. So for every conversation about this could happen or this could happen, and we talked about this last week, Bear. I know you had Illinois. I had Illinois without Cooper to Gene. He was basically the guy that would field the punt at the 30, run it to the 45 so they could eventually kick a field goal. Well, he's he's out for the year. So they have <laughs> They have no ability to flip the field. And look, I get Nebraska is going to be punchy and they're going to be fighting. But have we watched Nebraska's offense this year? I mean, Nebraska couldn't hold on to too much of it against Colorado. I just, man, this might be like three, three and half. Yeah, I I think they feel a little bit better with Chuba Purdy uh, at quarterback now. But uh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, I, I guess and you're, you're relating it to to having Jeff Sims or uh, or uh, Hun Henrik in there. I forget his last name in there as well. Harburg. But, uh, yeah. Nebraska. Not, thank thank you very much, Harburg. I, I appreciate the, uh, the the pickup there. I like TCU getting the ten against Oklahoma here. I, I mean, I, I don't know if we know for sure if Jola Farouk and and Dylan Gabriel going to be 100 percent in play. Uh, TCU looking for a bowl eligibility since bringing the uh, since making the change of quarterback and sending Channel Morris to the bench. They, they've been uh, pretty good. Oklahoma, yeah, they had the one big win against West Virginia uh, lately, but a lot of their score g- games have been one score wins. Jeff, you you uh, you like the Horn Frogs here? You like you like the Sooners here? Looking to potentially uh, with some if, if they win against yeah. some from Oklahoma State on Saturday, they would get back to the Big Twelve title game. I just think that. With this game being on Friday, there's almost no chance Gabriel can play. I mean, that's what I think. Like concussion protocols typically take five days um, in, in a typical, and that's if you have no setbacks whatsoever. So it takes five. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, basically, right? And you then get him back, I guess, on game day. But he hasn't practiced all week. And again, if you have one day of setback, one day of setback, that's it. Um, and so I just think he's not going to play in this game. So you have a, a backup quarterback, obviously a young kid who in this offense is obviously designed at times to make it easier on the quarterback. Um, and they're playing for something still. I, I don't know if TCU can hang with them. If, if they can move the ball in offense, you're basically betting on Arnold being able to move the ball. Right. I mean, that's basically what the wager is. If they Oklahoma here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Will, uh, you have any uh, thoughts on uh, TCU Oklahoma? Yeah, TCU's played the last played well the last month or so. I like the points here. I might even I think I'm probably going to sprinkle a little TCU money line. I think we've talked about Oklahoma all year. They're not as good as their numbers. They're a little overrated, um, and, and that's proven out here. And, and you throw in the fact that Gabriel's probably not going to play. They were lucky to beat BYU last week. To me, this is a good spot for TY uh, for for TCU. And here's the thing: if you're betting, don't wake up on Friday and Saturday and say, "All right, who needs to win to go to a bowl?" I'm going to bet those teams. That those numbers are going to get pounded into shape. So look at this: you're probably listening to this Tuesday, Wednesday. Get in front of those because people like to bet on these teams that need to win for bowl eligibility. But get ahead of those numbers because those numbers move accordingly. So this is one of those scenarios. And yes, I do like TCU as well. And look, we're talking about a bunch of five and six teams here, so it's not like we're talking about great teams. And, right. and frankly, there might be some of these teams that might just be ready to to, to lick the stamp and put the and mail in the rest of the season because they just want the season to be over with. Uh, elsewhere in the Big Twelve, we mentioned Oklahoma with a win can stay alive for the Big Twelve championship game. Texas with the win uh, against against Texas Tech, uh, thirteen point favorite. I see now down to thirteen in most places. Um, o- o- over Texas Tech, CJ, uh, Baxter came in, did great last week. Special teams with the big block PAT that I think really changed the momentum of that game around. Uh, Sammy, any thoughts on uh, Texas, Texas Tech here? Uh, I see 13 and 54 seems to be the uh, the consensus everywhere. As long as Quinn Ewers takes care of the football, man, they're going to score as much as they want. You know, this is a game where line of scrimmage going to be controlled by Texas on the O and D lines. We're talking about guys in 11 and one Texas team, which you haven't been able to say in a long, long time. They have been building lots of talented, you know, stables, if you will. I mean, every class has talent and the next class might be the most talented class, which is crazy to even think that Texas Tech is, has been on quarterback two for a while. Texas is is rolling right now. And I, I think anything under 14, I would lay. Um Make sure you come back to me though when we talk about your favorite school bear. We got to talk about Colorado. I mean, this could be the spot where we we officially bury Colorado this year and like lower the coffin into the ground. Like, they have nothing to play for, right? They they're four and seven. No. The quarterback I laid twenty. Probably, I laid twenty one and a half. 
he's probably not going to play. I mean, why would Shador Sanders play in this game against Utah, the team that could physically murder him in the backfield? You know, like, I mean, the the pressure in this game that Utah is going to bring through the line. Jeff, can you imagine being like a a 5'9", 5'10", Colorado backup offensive lineman having to come into this game potentially? (laughs) Holy cow. I mean, Utah is going to bring the house for four straight quarters. And the thing about Colorado is – no quarterback wanted to go there because they knew they weren't going to play. So there's no depth behind Shador Sanders. I mean, you could probably lay 24 on Saturday if he's out. You could probably lay even more. This could be this could be really bad for Colorado this weekend. So I don't know if you were anyone was awake to see the end of that game. I was definitely sleeping, but I caught the highlights. The, the final quarterback who played for Colorado threw a pass to himself. It was tipped. He caught the ball and then threw an interception. That's an illegal forward pass. But not if you throw an interception, Barry. I learned something new. You can have an illegal forward pass be accepted if you throw an interception. So it was counted as an interception, even though it was an illegal forward pass. That's how good Colorado was playing. He threw the ball. It was tipped. <laughs> he caught it, threw it again, an illegal forward pass, but it was intercepted. So Washington State kept the ball. That's how bad it's for Colorado. Here's the thing, too, guys, is Colorado is the only team in the country who's 4-7 and seven and gets every team's best shot each and every game. So Utah's coming off of an Arizona loss. They lost more starters, uh, the guys on defense. But Cam Rising announced he's coming back next year. That'll fire up the team. And again, senior night, they're, they're in Utah. But they're gonna, Colorado gets everyone's best shot each week because of the, of the hype they've created around their team. So this game is going to be... 45-10? I mean, if Tanner doesn't play, they're not going to score. Yeah, that, that that seems... All, they're not like, going to score a touchdown. Yeah, if I, 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 I later remember we, last time we saw Utah lay an egg the way they did last week against Arizona was, was against Arizona State oh, or, or against U, or against Oregon. Next week, they came back and beat ASU 55-3. Like, I, I think we're, we're looking at a, a yeah. similar type of game like that. They, Utah does not play bad football the way they did last week, two weeks in a row. Will, the dealer choice there, Colorado comment, uh, Texas comment, where, where do you want to go, my man? Definitely talking me into laying it here with Utah. That will be in the account in the next few minutes. Um, and remember, too, these teams view Colorado maybe as a little bit of a threat in terms of the recruiting. Hey, let's take care of that threat right now. We'll beat them you know, 55 to 6, and we'll show these recruits where they should go and where they shouldn't go to school. So keep that in mind for, uh, for, for running up the score. I do think it's a little high with Texas versus Texas Tech. I, I don't know. I know they've got some issues uh, defensively. A couple of their key guys are banged up. A defensive lineman and a D-back. Sounds like the defensive lineman is good to go. I just think um, that's a lot of points. We, we've seen this so many times in recent years where, and dating back back to like Darren Sproles versus Oklahoma, and, and these teams that have a lot to play for, everything's on the line. Th- there's a lot of pressure on them. Sometimes they come out a little tight. So Oregon, Texas, these teams, I'm afraid to lay the big numbers for them. I think these teams get up for playing spoiler like Texas Tech, Oregon State. So to me, I take the points with Tech as well. Yeah, the, the amazing thing with Colorado is I think if we look back at the start of the year and we said Colorado's going to go four and eight and be like, yeah, that's sure. that's a good season. Yeah. That's acceptable. But I, I think after kind of the fool's gold early on is stealing a couple games that they really shouldn't have won either game against TCU or Colorado State. And yeah, they did blow the, the Stanford game like. This team was really, really, really close. And even the Arizona State game was, was a, a last second field goal. Like, this was a team that was close to going two and 10. So, like, it's going to be a very interesting offseason there to see who stays, who comes in. I'm sure Sean Lewis is gone with oh, the way, I mean, that was ridiculous the way, the, 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 the way, the way Dion handled that over. and giving Shermer, like, play calling. Like, like that, that was, and it's like, I don't know. I, I think before the year, there were a lot of people that wanted to see this work and it would be great if the, and look, I, I still do. I think it would be great if a, a hall of fame player becomes a coach and has a great coaching career, but I get a sense after the way this season's gone and everything. And maybe like, there are probably a lot of people out there that are kind of, kind of getting the, the whole, the he who laughs last kind of deal and kind of reveling a little bit in the struggles that Colorado's have right now, Jeff. Yeah. Look, Four and eight is a commendable season after what happened last season. They were terrible last season. We know that. But if you're evaluating them, the thing that gives you the the most pause about next year is they got worse throughout the season. Their best game was TCU, which was week one. And I get there's many reasons for that. But nonetheless, they're playing their worst football at the end of the season. When you have a, a, a brand new coach, 
with new players, you want to see the incremental improvement each week, right? You hope that week 10, 11, 12 is better than weeks one, two, and three. The game management issues, the penalties, the offensive line is worse. Uh, you know, there's, there's regression skill position players. Like all these things are happening right now for a team that you hope the opposite would happen. You hope that you're getting better throughout the season. They're going to, they're going to have one pack 12 win this year. One. And, and so I think point. that the regression to me is some of the concern heading into next season. And, and, and you have to figure out why that is. Taking the Jeff, ball first in overtime, why. all sorts of those things. Yeah, <laughs> twice, multiple twice, times. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> um, Jeff, tell me why I should lay the wood with Oregon in thirteen and a half on Saturday. Oh, they're going to win by a lot of Friday. points. That's why. Um, so a, a couple things with this game. I, I think uh, emotionally, let's talk emotions, right? So Oregon State is building up their schedule, right? They, they, they had Washington, Oregon to end the season pair. They knew this, right? And, and the Washington game was the final game at Racer Stadium as a Pac-12 team. They they have a Brand new stadium, right? They, they rebuilt the whole side. This was the game they've been waiting for for an entire year, hosting Washington. They host Washington. That place is sold out. That place is packed. Beautiful PNW weather. Yes, it was It was a perfect day. I played in those games before in Research Stadium, exactly like that. They need, they, they need to add more urinals, though, it appears. Yeah, that was, that was an interesting... Um, uh... But nonetheless, like they build up to this game, and they lose a game they should have won. DJ, you did not play well. I've watched the film. It was a bad game. Washington did not score in the second half of that game, and Oregon State lost that game. Jonathan Smith, rumors, talking— Chiefs of the, the Chiefs yeah, of college we'll, football. We'll get there in another podcast, buddy. We'll get there. Um, Jonathan Smith might be talking to other schools right now. I think there's a big letdown opportunity emotionally for Oregon State going on the road. We, we talked last week about the home road splits. They're much worse on the road the last two years than they are at home. And this morning, I saw a picture from one of the Oregon football players. It was 5.51 in the morning, a.m. Pacific time. He's in the facility, and on the locker room TVs, they're playing the fourth quarter of the Oregon-Oregon State game from last year. If you remember, Oregon State ran the ball, what, 17 times in a row, scored four touchdowns. I think Oregon's ready for this one. I think they've been waiting for this one the entire season. They've been building momentum up for this one, and it's going to be ugly. I think they're going to stop the run, and that's they brought in specific players for this game. I know I'm rambling about Oregon, but who cares? They brought in players specifically for this game, their middle linebacker, for this game. Like I just think that they've been waiting all year for this one, and Bear, it's, I, I'm, I'm like 49-20, something like that. I think it's going to be a, a, a very wow. big one for Oregon. All right, all right, and that'll do it for uh, Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bats podcast this week. As Jeff is down, it's gone off on an Oregon. And I just think it's I, no, no, Sammy. I'm just you have like completely flipped. Like two weeks ago, you're like I don't know how good Oregon is. Oh, they're and losing this game. They're losing 20. this game. I don't think I, they're going to lose. It. Let me let me put it this way. Let me play contrarian for one second. I was at the deli today. The deli guy who he doesn't even gamble. What'd you He's get? Like, right, what, what, like what'd Oregon. you get? What'd you get at the deli? <laughs> he loves Oregon. The guy <laughs> at the deli loves Oregon. And I'm like, he didn't even speak English. And he's quacking <laughs> like a duck. Like that, that's where we're at because everybody just watched Bo Nix throw a million touchdowns in the first half. And Oregon State just lost a game it should have won. And like that, that completely accordions the spread. What bear? What's the number last week? If Oregon State wins, not thirteen and a half. There's some sausage, egg, and cheese on a, on a hard roll with with the, with the Snapple half and half. Is that what you got at the deli? I got the prosciutto for lunch, but the guy wouldn't stop okay. quacking at me. He just quack, quack, do, quack, do quack, you, quack, quack. Do you go? Do you go? Do you go provolone or do you go uh, something else? Mozzarella, no cheese. All right, fresh. Oh, no, Barrett, I took it out of the garbage and put it on my sandwich. Yeah, it's fresh. No, no, no. <laughs> no, fr fr no fr fresh mozzarella. There's a difference between just your regular slicing mozzarella and, and, and fresh mozzarella. That's all. I know. I know. I'm, worked up. I'm, I'm worked up here because, like, I'm, I'm concerned that, like, this is the game that I'm going to end up on the stupid beavers because everybody's betting Oregon. <laughs> and I'm only going to bet Oregon State because everybody's betting Oregon. And they're going to be on 21 nothing. So I'm not going to bet the game. Next. Just wait until next week and you can hop on Washington. Maybe that not, I feel like I might have taken a bad number now last week when I took it's the Huskies. Like I took the Huskies it's plus seven, seven last week thinking that was going to be a good number. And, and and now well, I've seen seven and a halves out there. And so I, I might I might have a bad number on UW next week. Come on, this is gambling content. Nobody ever has bad numbers. If you watch listen to these shows, everyone always has great numbers <laughs> in pocket. So you can't so you can't admit that you can't admit that you have a, a bad number. No, I, I agree. I think it's a lot of points. I got the Dolphins um, minus seven. Oh, that's a different that's a different sport. 
different sport. Yes. No, I, I'm, I'm with Sammy. I just think it's a lot of points. Oregon state, they've lost three games, but it's only by a combined eight points. This is an, an Oregon team. A couple weeks ago, it's a completely dead is a doornail USC team, 17 and a half point favorites. They won the game by what? Nine points. So 13 and a half. There's some 14 minus 120. I'd much prefer that. I, I'd lay a little extra juice to, to get protection on the 14, but I'll, I'll take the dog in this spot. Any concern for Georgia? Maybe, uh, taking the foot off the gas this week, resting some players week before the uh, SEC championship game? 24 and a half, I think the number is. How about the other team in the SEC championship game? Is there a letdown for Bama? If you really want to, do you have an, does anybody have an appetite to take Auburn off that performance? I know it's a lot of points. I thought about it. I couldn't quite get there. I don't know. Bear, that's more your cup of tea to take a team like that. I, I had, I had a, I had a money line parlay that I put together last week where I, I had Auburn as a part of it. And fortunately, kind of early on, second quarter, I was like, this is, I wish I would have had like the same intuition last March when I was sitting there with way too much money in, on a Purdue money line bet. Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I did not fully get off of that. But I had a feeling this, this New Mexico. You, uh, yeah, I, uh, St. Peter's was I, such I, a good I did story get on New Mexico. Me- it, 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 they were they were not, uh, yeah they were St. Peter they, well that was fairly Dickinson St. Peter's was two years ago oh, when okay. they uh, okay. when, they, when they beat Kentucky I know you had that one too. And, and yeah yeah that was yeah, I, I was that was another good one for uh for the for the archives but where was I going with this uh, yeah I I don't know if I could back Auburn here I really don't like they 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 are not a good football team especially in offense and sometimes you see these defenses kind of wear down throughout the year I could not I could not take Auburn. Um, I'm sure that probably means they are the right side, but I will not get involved here. I'm just looking at the uh, Georgia Georgia Tech games last few years: forty five nothing, fifty two seven, forty five twenty one, thirty eight seven. So uh, it does not appear that Georgia has been looking ahead. If you're looking at the uh, recent years against three and nine, three and nine, seven and six, five and six, Georgia Tech teams. So uh, would you lay the uh, would you lay the twenty four? I just stay, I'd just stay away. I just stay away. I I think that the you know the, the idea that maybe Georgia's holding something back. I don't know. They they could just trample Georgia Tech, right? I mean, it, it doesn't take very much for them just to run the ball and play great defense in this game and win this one by a comfortable margin. I would stay away from this one. I'm look. I'm looking here. There's just so many so many games that we just really don't know. What to expect? We hit on Florida, Florida State a little bit, uh, Alabama, Auburn. I'm a, I like that. I like Washington covering the Apple Cup. I just, I, I just six I, down to down to down to fifteen at circa. Yeah, um, I, I know they to open, right? Yeah, yeah, I I know there's I know that there's um, they've qualified for the Pac-12 championship game, and there's maybe a thought that they sort of quote, hold something back, but they're going for a twelve and zero season. Like that'd be the first time. Um, a, a team in the Pac-12 has gone undefeated. And there's a, you know, there's talk, obviously, if you go 12 and 0, there's a case to be made. If you lose to Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game, you should still be in the cultural playoff. And they didn't play well in offense against Oregon State. It was wet. It was raining. They dropped a lot of passes. They ran the ball decently well. Dylan Johnson might be out, which I'm not that concerned with. On Washington State guys, I mean, they beat Colorado. They lost six straight games before that. And those games weren't competitive. They allow a ton of points. They allowed 39 points to Cal. They allow a ton of points. And so they allowed 44 to Arizona. I think Washington's offense gets back on track in this game. Um, Washington State can't run the football. Like, they're just, they're not a good football team. And there's a lot to play for in this game. I, th- I think Washington covers this game by a decent margin. Anybody find any FCS title odds out there? I've been looking all over for uh, for FCS title odds, and I can't find um, any out there. So let, let me let me know if you guys in your in your in your hunting come across any FCS. T- I, I'd like who, to who you, who you laying uh, South Dakota State's South the best State, team by yeah. far. Yeah. So I'm I'm curious to see what their uh, what their price is. To, to what would you lay up to to win the championship? <sighs> oh, that's deliberation. I don't know. It's, it's a good question. I I I. I'd lay. I, I don't think they should be plus. That's for sure. Yeah, I'd say that. Um, All right. There's your FCS championship talk, Sammy. No, any, anything no, else out no, there this week no, that we're on? We we can't let Sammy off the hook. Sammy, I see the smirk on his face. He knows it's coming. He kept a winner from us in his back pocket. Whatever that game was, that off the radar game. He texts us in the third quarter. Remember on the group chat. Oh, by the way, I meant to tell you this pick that's about to win was going to win. So he withheld it from the audience. He withheld it from us. <laughs> Repent for your sins, Samuel. It is my fault. 
I also blame you three, like 30% of the pie, because nobody asked me what it was. You also didn't ask me on the show. So Deflecting. that really isn't my fault either. But yeah, once I sent that text, I'm like, uh oh, I scrolled up and my heart <laughs> went into my nuts. I didn't what know game like, was it? what to what say. Game was it again? I was so. The, Bra- yeah, yeah, the, Bra- so the, Bra- the Bryce Cowell musket, Maine, Maine, New Hampshire. There were like 60 points. Yeah. The musket, the the musket stays quarter. in Durham. The musket should be paying property tax in Durham, New Hampshire. Unfortunately, guys, you know I don't have the- an FCS play for you on Tuesday. We we need a little bit more time to massage <laughs> and see what's going to happen uh, for the weekend ahead. Yeah, we're yeah we're in the playoffs now, so you, you, we're, we're gonna we'll we'll have numbers up probably uh, a little bit earlier. I, I wonder what the uh, wonder what the Drake North Dakota State number would be. I, th- I mean, I, I think people have this uh, perception that the Bison are down a little bit this year, and I think. They are compa- relative to uh, what they've been lately, but wonder wonder if the Bison might be a little undervalued heading into the uh, the FCS play. So you don't have an FCS play. Uh, anything from the uh, anything else from the board that we didn't get to that you're on? I'm going to wait out and see what's going on at Kansas. You know, we did discuss in this thread last week, and we don't have to get into the theatrics with Jason Bean when. He was running around the stadium and everybody ruled him in. And then they said he was starting and they announced that he was starting and then he didn't play, which was wild. We could have that conversation at a different time, I guess. But if it's going to be Ballard again, the uh, the kid, Cole Ballard, the freshman, I think, redshirt freshman, he has to go on the road now as a six and a half point favorite against Cincinnati. I know Cincinnati's not great, guys, but I that number is. No, they're not. I had them last week. Super fishy, man. I mean, Kansas, I'm not laying six, six and a half with a uh, a young quarterback on the road. I don't care where it's at. Just not going to have, well, I do care where it's at. If it was at Delaware, I would care. I'm not going to lay six with a young quarterback in conference play on the road. That's not going to happen. So I might have to plug and play the Bearcats. Will, uh, McDee State is just beating Texas State 59-48 yes. great, great in uh, at the Thomas Assembly Center in Ruston, Louisiana, uh, as we're recording the uh, the pod here on Tuesday afternoon. So, uh, got any college hoops plays for us, as well as anything off the board on uh, Friday or Saturday in college football? I'm trying to think of what we didn't get to. What about your all alarm? First of all, uh, Sammy's point about Kansas, I, just, I don't want to fade that coaching staff. That Kansas coaching staff is not good. That's they the are problem. elite, man. They are yep. so good. Uh, how about your team? It's going to be a cold. That game is in BC, right? That's a cold, sleepy spot. Cristobal laying a big number. I'm not doing that. That would be dog or pass for me. Is that a, is that a game you have a play on for your alma mater there, Bear? We're, 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 we're going we're gonna to cover that in the segment following the gambling group chat. Okay, that, little tease, that for a little, little tease. tease. But, 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 but let's say I, let, let's say my sentiments are uh, are shared uh, ex- exactly there. So I hope. Oh, I have one more because one more? Will has been hauling this team. Right, Will territorial cup? Are you taking Arizona State plus the ten over Arizona? Are we are we staying away from your Sun Devils? Is, is, Sc- is Scadabo playing it's, quarterback? It's been, your, it's been your team of the year. These are both my teams. I can't go. This is like my this this is like the Kelsey parents when the Eagles play the Chiefs. These are both my little squads going against each other. I just have to sit out and wear like one of the the jerseys, half Arizona, half Arizona State, and just stay away from it. That's another great coaching staff. Arizona, man, what a number they did on Utah last yep. week. That was a uh, totally. a thorough beating. But no, that's 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 a pass for me. Did you have something on that game later? 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 Wow! Later, yeah. Now I was just curious. What is the scenario? Was going to be against me. Isn't there a path Oregon, for Arizona Oregon, to get Oregon, into that yeah, Pac-12? Yes, center? Oregon, 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 Oregon when, when Oregon loses the Civil War to Oregon State in at Austin Stadium on Friday, Arizona can get to the Pac-12 championship game you, uh, by they were winning the territorial to one. of Arizona State. They were 350-1 to one to win crazy. the Pac-12 before the season, and they got a chance to get into yeah. the game. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if Oregon loses and Arizona's there in the Pac-12 championship game? Like last year when Oregon lost in Civil War and Utah got in? Is that, is that like last yeah, year? Kind of like that. Kind of like last year? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Bear. Uh, Ar- but look, the thing about it is Arizona will know, right, by the time they kick off. So that might yeah. change the motivation of their game if Oregon wins, uh, Arizona's out. Yeah, but for Arizona... Well, that, it's not ten, because of... 10-win season. But it's also not because of 70-7 to seven two years ago. Yes, correct. And that is very well known about that game. So, um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Guys, hope you both have a great Thanksgiving. Appreciate the uh, the time. As always, that'll do it for another week of the Gambling Group Chat. Back from the Gambling Group Chat, Sammy screwed us last week. He sent us a text about an over that hit in the second quarter but didn't actually give yeah, us that. That was really nice. Was nothing like past posting. I know. This is brutal. Friends don't let friends no. pass post. Let's get to our best bets. Before we do that, let's recap what you already have wagered on in this show. 
You have UTSA plus four. You have North Carolina State plus two and a half. Temple plus 11 and a half. TCU plus 10 and Utah minus the 21 and a half bear. What is your best bet of the weekend? I took Boston College plus nine and a half earlier in the week at the open. And well, not at the open, but it, I saw it in eight and a half. Then I went to nine and I saw nine and a half and I grabbed nine and a half. Now it's nine. And I also took BC plus 290 on the money line. Like, like look, this is a Miami team that has been, you watched them the last half of the year. They lost a couple one score games to Florida State and Louisville. I just don't know how much fight is left in this team that was a kneel down away from being five and oh. Two and five since then. We don't know what the weather in Boston is going to be Friday, early noon. I would imagine probably upper thirties, low forties. Like I just don't know what type of effort we're going to see uh, from Miami here. This is kind of a even though Miami's down and they're not a great team, it's still kind of like the Super Bowl for BC to be able to say we beat Miami. Played FSU really well up there. Um, I think they got a great chance to beat this deflated Miami team on their home field. Like I said, I grabbed BC plus nine and I took the Eagles on the money line as well. Yes. Miami <clears> on the road <throat> in a spot that they, you know, this game to them doesn't mean anything. No. There's no meaning to this game. It's going to be cold. It's going to be miserable. Just like Colorado, everyone sort of wants to beat Miami. It's like a sort of, you know, like they, it's Miami. They want to beat Miami. So Boston College will be up for this game. And, and remember like what Will was talking about too, like just these teams that need to win to get yes. ball eligible. Like, this is kind of Miami is bowl eligible, yes. but this is going to be a team. I can I saw a projection from Brett McMurphy that had Miami playing SMU in a bowl game, like 401k mortgage houses paid for in that game. It's all in SMU if that yes. happens to the match. Former assistant against Miami, yes. a team that couldn't care no. less about oh, no, not at all. Please let yes. that game happen. Uh, I'm with you. I, I think Boston College is, is so discerning the side here. I'm going to a rivalry game for mine in the Pac-12 Conference, the, the Territorial Cup. All right, well. Uh, Arizona, I know, right? Well, Arizona, didn't make a play. You got it. Uh, minus the 10 here on the road to Arizona State. Um, play this for a couple reasons. One, Arizona is looking to win 10 games, Bear, and they're looking to play the Pac-12 Championship. Now, they'll know the results of the Oregon-Oregon State game, but – um, they're one of the best teams playing like one of the best teams in the country right now. Yes. They're not the best team, but they're playing very good football right now. Right. And Arizona State can't score. The last five games, it's seven. The outliers, 38, 3, 17, 13. And 10 of those points at Oregon were, were kind of in, in garbage time. They just can't score right now. Uh, Jed Fish is talking about this week. Arizona's head coach at 70 to 7 game. Arizona State won three years ago. I think they're trying to do the same thing to Arizona State this weekend. So I got Arizona minus a 10 here. This number feels way too low uh, in a rivalry game. I get it, but Arizona State can't score. So give me Arizona minus a 10, Bear. Yeah, I mean, the problem is you just don't know what you're getting a quarterback from ASU if, if Boyer is going to play or if they're going to have to run Statabo out of like a wildcat. Or, Con or they, Conyers. I mean, like yeah, it's, 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 not, it's no. not good. Arizona minus 10. There we go. Okay. Like, what what it, Arizona be an awesome story and it's fantastic. They could win ten games. Yeah, it'd be ten. Yeah, it, it would be uh, amazing. Hopefully, they will not be in the Pac-12 title game because for you, I want you to be happy, and I have a nice mm -hmm. Oregon ticket to the national title as well. So crazy to think that this is the last regular week of the regular season. Yeah. So uh, we'll be doing this next week, conference preview and games. conference championship games, and um, Heisman Trophy to see if there's any last yeah. minute bets to potentially get in on, but. uh it's been fun. Make sure you check out the uh, the column on uh, foxsports.com. I always uh, add some plays there after the fact with the pod. That probably will certainly be the case again this week with us taping on, on Tuesday. So for Sammy, for Will, for Jeff, appreciate everybody's comments, downloading, listening, subscribing, all the positive reviews. I saw we're like a we're like a 4.7 or 4.8. I like it. Like there actually, we go. It was, that, that was great. Much appreciated. And remember, bless you bet. The more you lose when you win.